management we will uh, discuss about importing the data, exporting the data, then uh, deletion of the data from Salesforce, transferring the ownership from one owner to the another owner. There are two tools of uh, uh, in order to migrate the data. We have two tools in Salesforce. One is uh, import wizard and the other one is data loader. Right? First we will discuss about the import wizard which is uh, an inbuilt tool in Salesforce and uh, which has no cost. Okay. But the import wizard will help you to import your data up to 50,000. 50,000 records you can import using the import wizard. If you want to import more than that, then you will be uh, you will need to go for data loader. Okay. So under data management here, we have data import wizard. You can see there are other options, import accounts and contacts, import leads, import solutions, import custom objects. It means import wizard will help you to import your accounts and contacts, leads and solution. These are the standard objects. Apart from these standard objects, import wizard will not help you to import other standard objects. So there is a limitation in uh, import wizard that it will only help you to import your standard objects like accounts, contacts, leads and solution, not any other standard, ob standard object. Apart from these objects, you can also import your custom objects. Okay. So, this is the wizard that I was just talking about, import wizard. Okay. But import wizard will not help you to export your data. It will just help you to import your data. The name as the name suggests, import, import wizard. So, it will only help you to import your data. It will not help you to export your data out from Salesforce. So this is one of the, uh, you know, uh, one of the, if you compare it with data loader, the import wizard, you will see that data loader has more features like data loader can also help you to delete your data, data loader can help you to export your data, right? Data loader can help you to import it, export it, delete it. But import wizard can only help you to import your data. So first we will learn how to use the import wizard, then we will learn about uh, uh, data loader. Okay. So first of all, while importing your data, first of all, uh, the most important thing uh, is to prepare a CSV file. Because you will always be importing a CSV file in Salesforce. So first of all, you need to, for example, if I talk about, if you want to import contacts, right? If you want to import contacts, you can see there are two mandatory fields, last name, account name, okay? So you will need to take care of these things. If there are mandatory fields and if you do not, if your CSV has, uh, CSV doesn't have these mandatory fields, then your import will not be successful. Because while saving the data in Salesforce, it will look for these mandatory fields. Okay, is it clear? So it will check for the validation validation of your data, right? It will validate the data. In order to do so, it will look for the last name and the account name while entering any contact in Salesforce. So 
So first of all, you need to uh, prepare a CSV where you will need to enter the important details of a contact like the first name, last name, account name, phone, mobile, email address, whatever is important. So I'm just talking about the import, import thing. Here you can see it talks about the export, delete, deletion, inserting the data, updating the data, upserting the data, tools of, for data management, bulk API. So insert and absurd, these two are very important and the difference between them you need to understand. This may be a question in your interview as well. What is the difference between the insert and absurd? Okay. Insert and absurd. So insert is something when you are inserting new records in Salesforce. Absurd is something when you have already entered uh, when you want to update the existing records in Salesforce and simultaneously you want to create new records so that is absurd. So insert plus update is absurd and insert is inserting creating new records in Salesforce. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah, it's here. Okay. Okay, then there are Salesforce record IDs. When you create any uh, record in Salesforce, it has a unique ID that is 15 digit ID. Right? But in the external systems, like if in, uh, you are using any other CRM, they have the 18 digit unique case sensitive ID. Okay. So there are two uh, sort of IDs available, 15 digits and the 18 digits. You can see here the URL, the URL of Salesforce has 15 digit ID the report that you create has the 15 digit ID show based web services API right if you have any show API any FX FX API if you have created any API through FX web services to send emails right if you are importing some data from any external source into Salesforce Right, and if uh, that API is supporting Salesforce, it will have the 18 digit record ID. The formula fields will have the 15 digit ID. As I said, FX and Visual Force will have the 18 digit ID. We will talk about these activities. We have the upsorting the data, upsorting the data. Absurd means, as I said, absurd uses the Salesforce ID or the external ID to either create new record or update an existing record. So it will create the new records or absurd the or update the existing records. So first of all, it will try to match your data. For example, if you have a contact at John, right? You have a contact in Salesforce at John, and you have the same contact in your CSV file at John. You want to update the contact number for John, right? So you mentioned a different mobile number in your CSV file. But if you have two Johns in Salesforce, how will it recognize that the John A is the correct John where it needs to update the contact number? So first of all, we will export the record IDs. First of all, we will export the record IDs 
and then we will update it. I'll show you how. Let's prepare a CSV file first. I'm going to show you how to import the contacts, right? I'm creating few columns here, like first name, last name, account name. mobile number. So first name John Mike mm, Should we prepare that uh, CSV file? No, right now just look at this screen. Okay. Fine. Because if you miss anything, you will not be able to import your data. Okay, so I have just created, and I will save it on my desktop. It should be CSV comma eliminated the format Okay, so we have done with two contacts. I want to import two contacts in Salesforce. I will use the import wizard. Let's go manually to the data management. So it was about accounts and contacts. So I choose accounts and contacts. I will start the wizard. I will click on next. I will choose the file that I want to import. Import file. Okay. Now it says it talks about contact matching type. Salesforce ID, name, email. The Salesforce ID and the email address is used when you are updating. When you are updating the things in Salesforce, right? So that it will match the record from your CSV into Salesforce. And then it will be created in Salesforce, right? If you have any workflow rule related with the contact of uh, object then you can also select this box which says trigger workflow rules for new up and the updated records got it right now I will just select name because I, I am not updating records I am I am just creating new records and then I will click on new uh, next If I do not select a record owner here, right, record owner, there is a field as record owner. For all the imports, I will be the owner. If I do not select a record owner, a new record owner here in the wizard, for all the records, I will be the record owner. Then you can see that all the fields, these are the Salesforce.com fields and these are the import fields. 
for first name it has already been mapped the first name has been mapped with the first name last name has been mapped with last name right we do not have any contact address field we do not have any uh, we, we have a mobile number field so mobile number field has been mapped with the mobile phone if you want to override the existing account values if you have any over account values existing account values right so you can check this box we do not have any account to overwrite right now i will not check this box the account name has also been mapped with the account we do not have any account address or account phone we are good to go now i will click on next it says record owner field is not mapped so it is giving us a kind of warning that if i continue the import i will be the owner of all the records right so that is fine i will click import now once the import is done gopi you will also receive a, an email in your gmail account whatever your email uh, in salesforce you will receive a a uh, notification in your mailbox now i will go to the contacts so these are the two contacts that we have created john mike and shelja right account name was accenture and mobile number field is not available here the mobile number field was mapped so if you also want to see the mobile number the owner owner field is there we do don't need the title this is the list view i hope you are aware of it so mobile number owner is gopi because we did not select any other owner account is accenture two contacts john and shelja we have imported successfully right so now if you are done with it create create a csv file with five contacts okay guys create a csv okay. and then import them in salesforce okay uh should we do it right now yes because before we go ahead and i tell you about updating and upsorting the things you must be aware how to import the things first the first thing is import then there is update and upsort after this we will learn about update then upsort okay do we have uh, a specific values that we need to create or anything anything any contact Oh, first I, of all, I mean, I, first I of all, I followed your um, you know import wizard and created two of them, but with a different name. You have created them? Yeah, two of them, not five, but. Okay, that is fine. So, first of all, before going uh, for the import, what do you need to check? Any idea? What? First of all. before preparing your csv file what are the mandatory fields we need uh, what are yeah, the mandatory the fields required fields so you, yeah. you go to the contacts object and you look for the mandatory fields because if your csv file is missing the fields 
it will not help you to create them right and you will wonder why it's not creating them okay your import will fail so first you need to check okay great open okay, the you have done it what about others guys you have done it no i'm just starting it but i can i think i can do it later also if you are only waiting for me okay okay i think you should import at least two contacts versu okay i'll i'll just do it So guys, all good. Uh, if Going we, all good. If we, yeah, if we have uh, any other delimiter than comma, will it work? Where? If we have any other delimiter other than comma, will it work? Where? Where? In the CSV. It has to be CSV, or it uh, can it be like tab? No, no. Else? It should be only CSV. because sometimes you know when you import value some data right i mean comma is a very common thing that you might be using in any of your data so how does it work in that scenarios it might yeah. the delimiter file might be you know not an appropriate file this comma is not an appropriate delimiter sometimes mm-hmm. do, do, do we don't have any other alternatives where we can choose our own delimiter while importing mm mm-hmm. so it will only uh, uh, take the uh, c it has some limitation it will take the csv only oh, even okay. if i if i talk about the data loader which is the other wizard that will also uh, take I'm the csv i'm sorry to interrupt but yeah. is it the comma separated values dot csv uh, i should store it R- right 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 okay yeah thanks Uh, actually, it's showing a pop-up saying uh, this. Uh, I mean, this contains mm-hmm. features that will not work or may not be removed if you save it in a selected file format. Do you want to continue? Yeah, that's fine. I, it's just a warning. Uh, okay. Yeah. Are you? Uh, Make sure you getting... choose uh, the MS DOS CSV. When are you? When are you getting this? While saving your uh, Excel yeah, file? Yeah, saving. Yeah, saving it. Oh, that is fine. You can click on yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Now yeah, I go. Sorry. I'm sorry. Now yeah, I go to the data input. Guys, one by one, please. 
go ahead gopi yes gopi yeah uh, hmm. using the data import wizard right 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 Sorry, sorry, I didn't have interrupted you. No, no, no problem. Yeah, we should. Ah, uh, so now after I go into the data import wizard, mm -hmm. I just click on launch wizard or something. Yeah, go to just click on account import account and contacts. Uh, oh yeah. in the data management click account and contact select um after i click import wizard uh, for accounts and contacts now mm -hmm. start import wizard right 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 and uh, do i have to uh, change any the section below is set to default value nothing right no just click on next yeah click on next just look at look at the uh, mapping if the mapping is correct or not the, with the uh, from your csv field to the field of the cells for the the, map, the mapping should be correct the first name should be mapping to the first name the last name to the last name the account name to the account name yeah first name to first name last name to last name and uh, the re account name as well right ah uh, uh, yes i am not able to find the account name and you don't need to select any record owner right you can you can select it if you want to have a different hmm. owner for now yeah for now you don't need to select it if you want, in case if your uh, system requires any other owner any other contact owner right mm -hmm. so you can select them from there yeah actually i have another doubt uh, i mean uh, you just told me to check if the account name is matching account name and something like that right right that right but when i open the record owner it's saying last name column 0 first name column 1 account name column 2 mm -hmm. i don't know why did it come like that no no see on the first page it will just show you at the top it will show account fields contact fields so what is it showing right now contact in record owner contact information and additional contact information right the second just, one uh, step 3 it just is it's just the contact if you go to click on next and go to the next page it will show you the account details oh okay uh contact address information contact phone and you do not have address right so just yeah. click next yeah yeah it's showing account information yeah should be ah uh, after finish i just need to go to accounts and check if it's there right yeah you need to go to the contacts ah uh, yeah after sorry finish yeah. yeah sorry contacts you have a list view as new this week in the drop down if you go to the contacts um uh, new this week yeah monica any update from you uh yes gopi how is it going i am done i just created two contacts uh, for rajesh and kumar 
Okay, good. Okay, so everyone is done, right? Uh, yeah, right? I am done. Okay, great. So this was about the import. Now we will learn how to update the records, right? So how to update the records? So you must have noticed on the first page of import user, it says match it by Salesforce ID, email, or the account name. Yeah. Right? So the the safest way of importing is to use the record IDs while while you are updating the things or asserting the things the safest way is to use the record IDs but in uh, your CSV file doesn't have any record ID right so first of all we will need to export the record ID from Salesforce for example I want to update these two contracts John and Shelja that I have created today with the email addresses right these are the existing contacts and I want to I want to um, update their email addresses so how will I go for it I will go to the there are ways to export the data out you can also export it from data loader but right now we are not uh, discussing about the data loader if I go to the data management I have uh, data export services right so data export services will if I click on export now you can see here you have all the records we have projects if I click on contact and click on start in export what it will do is it will export the complete object it will not there there won't be any condition condition while exporting the data out right but I want to update the records of today records that I have created today right I do not want every uh, record from the contact in my CSV I just want two records also I cannot choose my fields if I'm using the data export service I cannot choose my fields data export service is used if you if you want if somebody wants the complete object and uh, export the complete object the record that you have in your, under your object then you can use the data export service if you want to schedule it schedule your uh, if I click on start export you can also schedule your export like you can sh schedule your uh, export every uh, you know weekly monthly right you can choose a start date and end date for your export and you can also pick a start time so data export service is not something usual when you do the export for exporting the things out either you can use the data loader or the uh, reports I'll show you how the reports work but right now we are not discussing reports so it will be uh, you will have very limited information about the reports I will just show you how to export these two contacts that you have created today is it clear about the scheduled data export how does it help the scheduled yeah. data export yeah right so you go to the reports
click on new report accounts and contacts contacts and account the report is based on contacts and the accounts click on create So look at the screen above, there is a filter for the date field. It shows created date from August 31st, right? You can also select created date today right and whatever the fields that you see here they will all go to your CSV so it's it's advisable that you drag and drop these fields out from in the left hand side panel because we don't need the mailing sheet mailing city so I will drag and drop them out So two contacts were created by Gopi and the two I have created. Do I do we need the account owner in the CSP? I don't think so. Account name is fine. Uh, let's update it. We will update the phone numbers as well and the. Uh, the thing is, like, uh, uh, yeah. my contact, the account name is mandatory. I'm sorry? Uh, while I created the contact uh, object mm -hmm. here, I uh, selected yeah. the account name as mandatory. Yeah, that is fine, but okay. we are just going to update them. We are not creating new records. So account name is already there, right? Okay. We are we are updating. We are not creating new new records. So account name is already there, right? Okay. Fine. Then uh, we have contact ID here. Yes. Yeah. Tell uh, me. After you go to reports and dashboards, uh, what do you hit on? Uh, reports and okay you go to the reports then you click on new report I'll show you I'll show okay. you again these steps but okay. please uh, concentrate okay. right now I have cho uh, chosen the contact ID because the contact ID is unique and we will be matching while updating our record we will be matching them with the contact ID okay so that it will be it will update the correct contact in Salesforce So we have four contacts with the contact IDs and email address field is blank, right? Then I will click on export details. And in which format I want? I want it in the CSV, right? I will click on export. Export is done, right? Four contacts. And where we can delete that uh, the text? Yeah. Automatically. No, no, no. Not manually, but when we export it. No. It will not delete automatically. Okay. It would be a problem if we automate the process. Okay. So we have email, the contact IDs, right? So I will update them with the email addresses.
Okay, then save it on your desktop. I am updating the import file that we had earlier. Okay, so we have updated the file with the email address and the record IDs. In the data management, we have, if I do not want to go to the account and contacts, I can also directly go to the data input wizard like this. And launch the input wizard. So we are dealing with the account and contacts. So select it. Now it's asking what what are you doing? Are you importing new contacts, updating records, or upsorting it? Upsorting them right now. What are we trying to do? We are trying to update the existing records. So select this one. Match them by, match the contact by, Salesforce.com ID. Right? Click on the CSP. You can also drag and drop your CSP here. Click on next. Right? So you can see one of the field is not mapped, the contact ID. Right? We need to map them. So click on map and map it with the contact ID field. the salesforce.com id right so contact id has been mapped with the salesforce.com id click next four map fields updating the record csv file is there click start import click ok This is the bulk data load job. It will show you how many uh, success you had when you tried to import them. So records processed, four records had been processed, status completed, record failed, zero, retry, there, is, there was no re retry, right? Now you can go to the contacts object look for new this week so you have all these contacts with their email addresses got it so record id helped us to update the existing contacts otherwise it would have created new contacts if, if you did, did not match them like if you try to match them with the names there was another option to match it by name, right? So name, two people uh, can have same name, right? But the record ID is unique field. The record ID for two contacts in Salesforce cannot be the same. So it's, it's you know, advisable and uh, mandatory as well. When you update or absurd the things, use the record ID. 
but like uh, while uh, importing the data right like we imported it from csv uh, uh, at that time we don't be we won't be having any idea or something like that so there is a possibility of uh, having the same account name there right i didn't get your question like uh, we, you have already rajesh in your contact now so i uh, um, i want to create one more uh, csv like we impo uh, import it in, into your uh, salesforce right i want to just mm -hmm. create one uh, csv file with new uh, contacts account name and all which is okay. uh, just a new csv created it, it, it mm -hmm. don't have any contact id which is uh, created by salesforce so if i import that one to the salesforce there is a possibility that uh, the same thing will be repeated right yeah if you create them with the same value it will be created it will be created okay. so first of all I that is why that is why okay that is why you are you are going to be an admin right so what you need to do is if they ask you if if the, your client asks you to create these contacts in salesforce import these contacts in salesforce they are asking they must be aware if their contact in, is in salesforce or not if they are asking you okay. import them do the import if they are asking you update them update means they must be there in salesforce right so you can also okay. check them you can also check uh, them in salesforce if if they are not sure you can update uh, you can uh, export all the contacts then you can check them that is what you can do like uh, exp Oh, I didn't get you. Like, uh, how can I check? Like, if, if there are some two or twenty thousand, sir, let it be like ten thousand contacts and all. How can I check? Like, uh, um, the same contacts are already there in the Salesforce or not? If you don't so have. Man, like, okay. So do one thing. If you are not sure if they are there or not, export all the record IDs. Okay. Export all the record IDs, right? Mm -hmm. If you are exporting them all, right? So first of all, there there must be some idea. If the, your client will tell you that I'm not really sure if they are in Salesforce or not, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If they are not sure if they are in Salesforce or not, you'll have to you know manually check, you export the contact in a different CSV, and look for a few of the contacts. They will have their record IDs as well. Match it with the record ID. Match okay. it with the record ID. Better go for uh, export and just uh, in export we can search for the name like uh, is it matching with the new uh, contacts list, right? Like if I go for this, that is why the absurd is used. For example, I had few contacts like this. We have these existing contacts in Salesforce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I also want to create two more contacts, right? I want yeah. to update these. I want to update these, right? I want to update these contacts, and I want to create two more contacts. Okay. Now can you exactly copy the same like uh, we have all the already have the Rajesh there there right? Can you see like uh, is there anything like um, is there a, it would be showing showing some error with Rajesh and all? We have the fourth one as Rajesh right? Can you copy the same for seventh? With a different mail ID. Let the first and last name be the same for uh, seventh column. Sorry, seventh mm -hmm. row. Just uh, have a different mail ID. But it will match it. Match it. It will match it with the contact ID, so it will not show any error message. It will just update it. It will just update the email address. It will not show any error message. Why? Because it will match it with the record ID. Okay. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah, I got it. It will. It will take it as an update. Yeah. Okay. The new one. Right. 
other uh, thing is like uh, we are exporting like uh, I have seen like uh, while exporting we have the one option as a Gmail also right Gmail uh, like when you are trying to export your uh, contacts list from your mm -hmm. uh, sales force to some uh, output like uh, I have seen one of the option as a, a Gmail there like uh, the first option is CSV and the I think the fourth one is a uh, Gmail while exporting it from Salesforce. Okay, let, let me show you the absurd and then we will talk about this. Okay. Uh, when you do a uh, match, right, uh, can we mm -hmm. just say, okay, look for ID first and if it doesn't exist, then look for name. Can we do like that? Can we do like a, a import with the condition where, you know, it looks for ID and if it doesn't find a match, then it looks for the name. Something like that, or it doesn't have any options. Okay, see. Right now, let me show you something. We do not have such option, but let me show you something. We are importing. We are right now. What 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 are we trying to do? We are trying to absurd, right? We have few existing records, and we are also creating few new records, right? So this is absurd. So in absurd. While then, when you absurd it, first of all, it will look for the Salesforce.com ID in your CSP, right? But for the new contacts, for the two new contacts, we do not have the record IDs, right? So it will look for their names, and then it will be created in Salesforce. They will be treated. I believe the thing yeah, yeah. that you. I believe the thing uh, that you are saying, Upender, that first yeah, of all yeah. look for the Salesforce.com ID, and if they are not existing in the CSV, then look for the name. That is not possible. But in the absurd, you can see, in absurd, our CSV has six records. Four of them, the first four of them has the contact IDs, but the record five and six doesn't have any contact ID. Right? Still, they will be imported in Salesforce. Why? Because first of all, it will try to match it by the Salesforce.com ID, and if it doesn't find them, it will just create them. Yeah. Okay. So that why? Because, uh, why? Because, values, let me let me complete uh, it. Why? Because we are absurding the things. Yeah, right now, I'm not I'm not updating. If you uh, if you would have been just updating, it will not create them. If you do not match them. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. Uh, the next option, update account existing account information. What exactly that is uh, that is doing there? You can also use that if if you have any existing account information, right? If you have if your CSV has accounts, right? No, no, no. It's account, saying account update, ID. E update existing account information in the sense it will. Oh, account. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. If your CSV has Account name, account site, right? Mm -hmm. Then we can use that. So it will, okay. it is both. Yeah, you can use it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Then we, you have also the work workflow rules and the processes if you want to trigger it with the new records. Again, you have the contact ID on map. So map it with the salesforce.com ID. Let's go to the contacts new this week. So it has created two new contacts, right? Monica and Gopi, with the email addresses. So you must have, this is absurd. So is it clear what is the difference between the import and absurd? Yeah, it's guys. Clear, like is it clear? Okay. So 
see we are done with the import wizard if you have any question you can ask me otherwise there are new topics in the data management i will discuss them right now also go through the notes it's yeah uh, i'm good okay it has some limitation it has some limitation like it will just help you to uh, there are few standard objects that it can import like the contacts accounts solutions leads right it will not help you to import your opportunities right then it will it will help you to import all the custom objects okay it it can help you to import up to 50000 records not more than that okay you you have all the information in your notes which you will be getting the differences between the data loader and the uh, import wizard okay if you go to the data management now you have the other options as the mass transfer records so mass transfer record is something from one owner to the another owner right if you want to if 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 you are the owner of few records and you want to transfer the ownership to any other person you can transfer it here for example if i if i click on transfer accounts so there are two owner fields transfer from and transfer to that's there is some activity given let me check so it talks about utilize the mass transfer record feature of the force.com platform to assign proper uh, proper ownership of records right so there is uh, an exercise as well that you can do later right now i will just show you how to transfer this is a very simple feature to transfer the ownership from one user to another so if i say So transfer it from Gopi to Sudhir, right? So uh, look at this. Uh, there are few options. It talks about transfer open opportunities not owned by the existing account owner. So any opportunity which are related with these accounts, open opportunities, right? Which are related with these accounts. If you want to transfer them as well with the account ownership transfer, you can check these boxes. transfer the close opportunities transfer open cases which are related with these accounts now find the account names account name equals to accenture right right we have one account and uh, the name uh, so i want to transfer the accenture account from gopi to sudhir right the current owner of the account is gopi and the next owner will be sudhir if i go to the accounts tab
Just give me one moment. It's overriding the the VA phase is overriding this. That is why we are not able to see the accounts. Now we should be. Uh, Gopi, have you done any modification? Uh, to what? Exactly. To the accounts page. The uh, accounts page. Uh, today I tried with uh, Visual Force page. Like uh, I created some Visual Force page for accounts, and just uh, override. Uh, I used the override option for the account page to the. Um, View the visual page I created for account. I practiced that one today. Uh, you have any problem with that? Like, no, no. But I just wanted to switch to the accounts. So, do you know how to if how to fix this? You have done yeah, like, this one. Uh, no, you need to go for uh, my, question right? is, my question is when you are going to when you are going to the when I'm trying to go to the account page. It's not mm -hmm. letting me go there. Do you know uh -huh. how to fix this? Yeah, well, uh, uh, set it to default now. Uh, click just, um, buttons, links, and actions. Great. So you have been doing this, right? Yeah, I'm working. Now, now what? Uh, just click that one. On yeah. for uh, first one, like uh, first row, you have the account tab, right? Yeah. Edit that one. Okay. Mm, now set it for no override user uh, use default. It's done. Now it should be good. Okay, so we have. If I go to the Accenture, you can see that the current owner is Gopi. The account's current owner is Gopi. So if I transfer it from Gopi to Sudhir. The owner will be changed, right? I'll say transfer. So I have transferred it from Gopi to Sudhir. If I go to the Accenture page and refresh it, the owner should be changed now. So account owner is now Sudhir. So this is how the account ownership is transferred from one owner to another. The mail will be sent to Sudhir. Yeah, he should be notified about this. Okay, even Sudhir is a real uh, person. Uh, he is working with me. Like uh, Sudhir is a, even a real person. I created with Sudhir. Okay. Then there are mass delete records, right? So mass delete record is the same thing. Like I mean, it uses the uh, same thing. First of all, you need to filter out your records. Like if I go for the mass delete accounts. So first of all, you need to filter your accounts. Which account you want to delete, right? So the account name equals to. I'm not deleting any account right now. I will just show you. We have one account as Accenture. <laughs> then there are few check boxes if you want to delete um, the other accounts as well which has the close or burn opportunities if you have any other owner like we have another owner here sudhir delete accounts that are associated with opportunities owned by someone else so account with those accounts which are associated with some other opportunities Right, so you can check this box. Then you have a box as permanently delete. If you permanently delete it, it will not be there in recycle bin to restore. Otherwise, if you delete, if you just delete it and do not check this box, the permanently delete, it will go to the recycle bin, the Salesforce recycle bin, 
and it will be there for the next 15 days and from there you can restore it but if you permanently delete it there is no way to get it back in Salesforce it will not be there in Salesforce uh, recycle bin got it guys done yeah so is, is there a limitation on the storage when we purchase salesforce yeah there That's is for the account okay there is if you go to the storage usage here there is a field under the data management mm -hmm. storage usage so the limit is given data storage file storage right data storage is storing your records right file storage is, file storage is a uh, like relating your uh, records with other files like these screenshots or everything you can yeah, go in we, I mean, like you can we uploaded a couple of images and stuff yeah. like that right? you can go in more detail right so record count account and everything is storage how much storage it is consuming right now this is the file storage documents photos mm -hmm. right So there is a limitation. This, this will depend on your Salesforce edition. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay, so we are done with the import wizard, delete, transfer. Okay. Now we will discuss about the data loader. So data loader, first of all, it must be installed on your system. Under data management, you have an option, data loader. Then you have if you are using Mac, use the download data loader for Mac. If you are using Windows PC, download it for your Windows PC. Okay, so guys, go ahead, install it on your PC. So, how it works? Let me show you. Maybe you can install it later on. How it works? So, data loader, data loader is a tool that will help you to export the details, export the things out from Salesforce. I have installed the data loader on my desktop. You can see it, how, how it appears. So data loader will help you to insert, update, absurd, delete, hard delete. Hard delete is something which won't be there in recycle bin. Export and export all. Export all is if you have something in your recycle bin, it will also export them out. Export all, right? Export will export only the records that which are active in Salesforce. You know about insert, you know about update, you know about absurd. Right now you don't know about delete, export, export all, right? So if I click on insert, it will ask me the user ID and the password got it so username will be the username that is for your Salesforce account so this is the username for your Salesforce account then your password okay uh, Gopi can you please text me your password and it will also ask you the security token you see it somewhere should be here grant login access approval my Yeah, let's see. Guys, can you see it in your org? Can you please check if you have the reset security token option? Do you see it? I tried it earlier, like I can't find it. I'm sorry? You cannot Once find I tried it. it, like 
No. You tried it for what? data loader? Mm. Yeah, yeah, like uh, I, um, exactly I've seen it in a, I installed it already in my Mac. I okay. Just to... okay, you had, uh, do you remember you had another account? You had another developer account, guys. Do you yeah, remember? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, this yeah. is your training or so it might be, it doesn't have all the things. So can you please give me the ID and the password for that account? Okay. Uh, for the developer one? Yeah. The password would be the same and the uh, ID I am sending you the ID now. Okay. Send me the password as well because it will not help me. Yeah, password is the same, like uh, I already sent okay. you. Okay, okay. Like we created this one, right? Like uh, which we are working on. That is uh, an enterprise version, right? It is the. Uh, what do you mean by the enterprise? Did you say enterprise? Yeah, you just. Uh, you okay. are working uh, right on the. This is a trial org. This is a trial training org. This is used for new guys, right? So it has not all the features enabled. So that they may not mess up something. Yeah, right? but this one is really good. This has even uh, sandbox in it. This version, like the one we are using it regularly, right? Mm -hmm. That is uh, shows uh, uh, that one has a enterprise version and that even has a sandbox. Uh, like even really good that has a full box, uh, full copy sandbox. You are talking about other org. You are talking about the regular the, one, like, uh, the regular one we are using. Yeah, so that is fine. So it has not all the features. It, it doesn't have the feature to uh, create the uh, reset the security token. Give me the ID. You must have, must have received some ID. Let's not confuse others. Okay. So it's a training org. It doesn't have the feature. But the data loader will need your regular password, the Salesforce password, and the security token. This is how you log in with data loader. Yeah, we can. Just checking for my. Uh, four zero five four seven. Yeah. Okay. So if I go to the personal settings, see here you have the option to reset my security token. Right? Okay. Why it was not there in, uh, th there was one more reason. Because uh, why, uh, why it was not there in your regular Salesforce, uh, the training account. Because the security token is used when you use your account outside your uh, trusted IPs. For example, if you have defined some trusted IPs for your organization and if you are using it outside of it, then you need to use the security token. But the training account can be, you must have noticed whenever I log in, log in with your training account, it never asks me any verification code, right? So with yeah. your training account, you can log in anywhere. That is why it, it did not ask for it. So this was one of the reasons. You must have received a security token. Please check. So I will enter the username here and then the regular password. Oh, I'll give me a minute. I just need to copy that all. I sent you the security token. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was able to 
insert the records using the data loader yeah okay great it has some problem with the oh your password is too long <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, not, uh, not ended password. Uh, the password and the the other part is the security the, token. The password and the security token. You must have logged in with your training or I believe. Uh, Upender. Hmm. You must you must you must have been using your training or right? Yeah, I'm using my training or yeah training account. Uh, yeah, I am also able to insert uh, with the. Okay, so try to. Uh, okay, now what? Uh, what I want you to do is. Let me see if I can log in. Okay, login completed successfully. Okay, so this is first of all. Look at the screen. It says it talks about all the objects that you can play with, right? So first, uh, if I want to. I'll go for the contacts. Okay. If I want, if I want to um, import the contacts, right? So I will click the uh, contacts here. I will select the contacts. Then I will browse the CSV file, right? I will browse the CSV file, but it has. You must be aware that it has the record IDs as well. Right. Okay. Then you have choose the existing map. If you have any existing mapping created in Salesforce, or create or edit new map. Right. So I can also say auto match fields to columns. Right, we do not have any ID for contact ID because we do, we do, we have not in exported them. Right, if I click on save mapping, this will be available for the next time use. Right, but I will not do so. I will just click on OK. Then click next. This is the directory where your success reports will be saved. Or if you have any error messages, it will be saved on your desktop. Whatever the directory you have selected, and click finish. You can click on view success. So it has all these. This is the new record ID. That you have. Okay, can you notice something? This is the Salesforce ID, right? And this is the ID of your data loader that you see right now. If you count it, it will be 18-digit ID, the data, the data loader one. Okay, and this is the Salesforce ID. That is why this is 15 digit. So you must have noticed. Data.com ID is what it is called. I'm sorry. The data.com ID. Data.com ID is something when you have any social media site, right? Okay. Social media site, and you are importing your contact from there. Then the data.com ID is used. Where do you see that? No, in the when I was trying to edit uh, the view and add an ID in there, so I couldn't see the <laughs> Salesforce ID. I can only see data.com ID there in the view. Okay, you should have a look by the say ID, just the ID. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it was insert. Then you can update the record. So for update again, you will have to uh, you will have some. A record IDs in your CSV file, the sales, Salesforce.com ID, right? How do you export it? You click on export. Then you choose your 
uh, choose the object that you want to work on. Then you choose your tar target for the extraction, right? I will replace the existing one, right? Choose the entry. So this this will be like the. If you are aware about the SQL, so this is a, a query, right? So first name, last name. I want the first name, last name. And the ID. I want the first name, last name, ID, right? So this is the extraction. So these are the contacts that we created today. So this is how you export it out. Got it? Yes, no? Yes. Guys? Is it tough? Do you find it tough? I don't think so. So this was about the export. So this will not include your deleted items. If you have any deleted item in Salesforce, if you do it export all, if you do it export all, it will also pick the deleted items. If you have any deleted item in Salesforce, then you have delete. If you want to delete it, you can also use the delete. Okay. So for your training or you have some exercises given in the document that you'll be getting. There is mass transfer records, right? There is, okay, there is there is one thing that is external ID. While creating a field, external ID is something to match your records. To match your records, you use your external ID. For example, if you are using uh, any external, uh, any other CRM and you want to you want to migrate your data from that CRM into Salesforce. So first of all, what you will do is you will create a, an external ID in Salesforce. And how will you do that? If I, if you go to create a new field and while creating a field in Salesforce, you have on one option there. That is external ID. Set this field as the unique record identifier from an external system. Right? So you can create an external ID field in Salesforce. When you will be migrating your data from that CRM, from any other CRM in Salesforce, that will look for this external ID that you will create in Salesforce. It will match the records through this external ID and then it will be migrated in Salesforce. Like open there in your case, it will be like the primary key. Yeah. Getting it? So yeah. it, will be, it will be treated as the primary key. So right now you just need to know what the external ID is, right? And uh, you, we have already discussed how to create the fields. So while creating your fields, if you choose that box, that, that particular field will be treated as the external ID. This is the legacy system, the other CRM in the screenshot, which has the ID field, which has a field as ID in your other CRM. Then you created another ID here 
the external ID in Salesforce, same as the ID field. So this is the external ID. While importing your records, it, it will match your ID field with the legacy ID. Got it? Yes, no? Yes. Yeah, if you are importing and if you want to update, you can always use this ID based on this ID. You can either do an insert update or upsert. Yeah. So it has few few exercises, right? That you can, uh, you I'll recommend you to do them whenever you have some time. Upload positions and the transfer ownership. Okay, guys. So this is all for today. Tomorrow probably we will discuss about the reports and the dashboards. Okay. So does this class yeah. include uh, for uh, the designing the Visual Force pages or no? Yeah, it includes the about the information about the Apex and the Visual Force, but it. Okay. It's it's just the basic basic information. It's not the it's not for 401. It's not for 501. The 501 is the next certification in Salesforce after 401. Basically, this is for 401, right? 401, 201, and then Visual Force Basics, Apex Basics. Okay. okay. You will get to know how to create your uh, uh, how to write your pages. You'll get to know about the attributes that you use in Visual Force Page, right? Okay. I'll tell you how um, I, I will try to provide you as much information as I can in these few classes, right? Okay. Sure. Okay, guys. So this is all for today. Thank you. Uh, can I have a minute? Like I have some doubt. Yeah. Tell me. Uh, in the data management, right? Like uh, when we are, uh, excuse me, like we are exporting the data, right? Data export. Mm -hmm. We have one option, like we I can schedule my data export. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to export it to Gmail. Like uh, earlier, we were discussing in our uh, preparation. Like, uh, can I export it to Gmail? Uh, the scheduling where, one. Where is the Gmail option? Can you show me that? Yeah, I was, I was about to ask you. Where did yeah, you see that? Can you click that one? Should be... Yeah, I have already done that. Maybe I have seen it in import, I think. Give me, give me a minute. Data import. Yeah, in uh, import. Import your data from Salesforce. Uh, the import wizard. Data import wizard. Data this management. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where is where? Data import wizard. Where did you see the Gmail? Uh, go for the next step. Launch wizard. Launch. Launch wizard. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Launch the wizard. Okay. Now. Yeah, set up the accounts and the contacts. Sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Accounts and contacts. Mm -hmm. Uh, go for upset or something like that. See, there is no option as Gmail right now here. If you have uh, any CSV, it's as, okay. You must be talking about the options: CSV, yeah, yeah. Outlook, CSV, Gmail, yeah. CSV, right? Okay. If you have a file in your Gmail account, okay, right? Mm -hmm. You must have some option in your Gmail to create CSVs, right? Mm -hmm. So you can create it and then you can upload it here. This is not. This is not about something. It's just the upload. It is just the upload. Okay, I would try that one. Like, uh, if I have some option in Gmail. Yeah, you can try it. You can try. It. This is the simple import, but the logic remains the same. Okay. okay. Uh, the other thing is like uh, we are using the regular org, right? We are the enterprise version. I'm saying we don't have that any. Trial days, right? The limitation of days, like uh, it's going to be unlimited, right? Yeah, it's going to be unlimited. Okay, thank you. Okay, guys. Okay, thank you. Nice see you. Okay, bye bye.